Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 86 of Lightroom Quick Tips. Recently, I received an email from someone and they were asking me how to create a sepia-toned image in Lightroom. And I thought this would be a good topic for a quick tips video. So I'm going to show you how to do a sepia tone. And we'll talk about some other toning things you could do in Lightroom that are popular today. Now, what you would do is, first of all, the sepia tone specifically, it's, it's done on a black and white image. So process your image as you normally would and convert it to black and white as you normally would. Then what we're going to do, we're going to use split toning to create the sepia tone. So open up the split toning tab. And traditional sepia tone it just has the shadows of the image kind of have a little bit of an orange tinge to it. And the highlights are left alone. Now, there are some people that like the highlights toned as well. And I'll show you how to do that. But again, traditional sepia tone, shadows are the only thing you're going to be toning. And you're going to tone those a bit orange. So you would go down to the shadows section of the sepia toning tab. And we want to move the hue slider to something that's a little orangey look to it. Now, if you just move it, you'll notice you can't see anything happen to the image because saturation is at zero. And a little mini tip you could do is when you move the hue sliders in this tab, hold the Alt or Option key in when you do it. The Alt key if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. And when you do that, you'll notice that the image becomes fully saturated as right now it's as though saturation were at 100 and when I let go of the alter option it goes back to zero so that's just a quick way you could adjust these sliders now to get that orange tone you want to use somewhere between maybe 30 and 50 uh, to give you an orange kind of hue to it or just a tinge so 46 is good now of course I left my or I pulled my finger off the alter option key so saturation is now at zero so we want to move that up so you just want to move that up to it's to taste how much do you want this these highlights or these I'm sorry these shadows tinged orange so maybe around 22 something like that now if it's spreading into the highlights a little bit too much you could go to the balance slider move that to the right and it will pull it out of the highlights and keep it more in the shadows and if you'd rather have it over most of the image you could move the balance slider to the left and it will be over the most most of the image now if you prefer you could keep the balance in the middle or somewhere around the middle and you can move the highlights also to a sepia tone so again i'll hold the alt or option key in and i'll just move the hue so it's somewhere you know kind of orangey and then we're going to move saturation up a little bit like that and then you can move balance around if you want although that won't do as much now since we have them the shadows and the highlights tone pretty much the same so that's how you would get a sepia tone using split toning so i'm going to reset that another popular look today is to have a black and white image but you have the shadows toned blue so to do that we're going to go back to the hue slider of the shadows uh, part of the split toning tab. We're going to hold the alter option key in and you're going to move it to its blue. Maybe somewhere around 230-ish will be blue and then we're going to move the saturation up until we like it. I don't know. 23. And you got blue in the shadows. Now again you could adjust the balance control so it's not affecting the highlights as much. So it's just in the shadows. Then you could come back down and readjust saturation and whatever you like you could do things like that and that will give you that kind of look that's very popular for a lot of images today so we're gonna reset that now there's another very popular split toning where you're adding sepia to the highlights and blue to the shadows and why a lot of people like this and actually this is being taught in schools in photography schools to help reinforce some photography theory specifically there's some color theory there is color theory where things that are warm in the image appear to be closer to the viewer and things that are cool in the image appear to be further away or receding off into the distance more. And some tonal theory states that things that are bright in the image appear to be closer and things that are dark in the image appear to be receding off into the distance. So you're re reinforcing those two basic theories about color and the other one about tone. 
And the way you do that is you give the highlights a sepia tone, which is kind of warm. And you're giving those shadows a blue tone, which is kind of um, cool. And that kind of reinforces that look. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to highlights for, first. I'm going to hold the alter option key in. And I'm just going to, again, move the U somewhere, you know, or maybe around 34. That's good. And we'll move saturation around 30. Now you could always come back in here and readjust these, obviously. All right. So the shadows, we want this bluish look to it. So I'm going to move though that to around 239. And we're going to take saturation and move that somewhere uh, till just eyeball in the image till I like it. And that kind of gives you that look and it helps reinforce those kind of theories about photography's uh, tone and the color in an image. So that, you know, if you like that look, good. That's great. Now, the last thing we'll talk about is um, a cross-processing type thing. And that's back in the old days when we did film and when you're in the wet dark room, a lot of times you had a specific type of film and you would use a different type of chemical that wasn't meant for the film. So maybe on black and white film you would use color chemicals or on color film you'd use black and white, things like that. And you get these different looks. And one real popular look and probably the most popular in my opinion for this cross-processing look is where you have your shadows uh, tone blue and you have your highlights kind of a copper and to do that what we want to do is with highlights just keep the hue at zero and just move your saturation up um, to something relatively high usually so somewhere maybe around 44. Then for shadows, you want that to be blue. So we're going to hold Alt or Option key in. We're going to move that to somewhere around 225, 230 in there. And then we're going to move saturation for that to taste. And as I eyeball the image, maybe right around 32. And that kind of gives you that, that again, that kind of cross-processing look. And then you could use the balance control to just adjust it to taste. Uh, to something that you really like. So that's it. That's just some tips on using split toning and specifically how to create a sepia tone because that was the question I was asked. I hope that taught you something you didn't know and I'd like to thank everyone for watching my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.